I'm going to show you a couple of topology tips that you got to know as a 3D artist. Let's say we got this Ferrari interior over here. And let's say we want to perform some changes on this little dent right here on this AC fan. Okay. As you can see right now, because of the subdivision surface modifier, we have these very round and soft looking edges. It looks like it's been molten. I don't want this to look like it's been molten. I want to sharpen that shit up a little bit. So there are a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to show you three ways which are not going to work, which are not the right way to do this, which are going to fuck up your topology. And then I'm going to show you the right way, which I think would be the best way in this particular situation. You're going to learn about multiple ways to sharpen up edges in general. And then in other situations, you can figure out which one would be the best for you. But in a situation like this, I'm going to show you a really important method for sharpening edges, which I think most people probably don't really know about. Now, like I said, we got a subdivision surface modifier. And in most situations, if you're looking at a beginner tutorial or something like that for Blender, they're going to slap a subdivision surface modifier on an object. This was my experience when I was first learning Blender. And then they told me, yeah, now you want to sharpen up your edges. Okay, so with Control R, you're going to add some loop cuts to tighten up your geometry. That's going to tighten up the edges a little bit. This is going to be supporting geometry, which is going to make your edges sharper when under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. Now, this is indeed true. When you add loop cuts with control R, it does tighten up the edges, as you can see right here. But there are two reasons why this doesn't work. The first reason is, as you can see right now, with this shiny matte cap, it gave us these sharp edges, so it pretty much fucked up the whole model. So now this is this doesn't look the way I want it to look, right? I got all these artifacts. Look, it doesn't look nice and round and smooth. You can clearly see these little folds over here, like you folded up a piece of paper in the middle. You can't straighten that shit out anymore. So that's, that, that's one reason why we're not going to use this method. But the other reason is if we want to tighten up the inside here, as you can see, because we have a triangle here and because of the topology, it's very difficult to do this using loop cuts. So on the inside, it's also not going to work too well. We can't really loop cut this part. It's going to cause us all sorts of problems. So in some situations, using loop cuts can work for some simpler supporting geometry. Okay. But in this case, this is not going to work. So we're not going to go with supporting uh, with loop cuts as supporting geometry. Now, in my videos, I teach people all the time when you're modeling something, particularly in hard surface modeling, and if you have to tighten up your edges, this is the second method. If you got to tighten up your edges, a better way to do it is to use bevels. Let me try to show you an example. Okay, let's say we got this cube right here. Let's pull this out to the side somewhere over here. And let's go back to material view. Let's say maybe we got some features on this cube. Maybe we extrude this or whatever. Okay, and now we add a subdivision surface modifier. And generally speaking, a better way to add supporting geometry is to use bevels. So instead of you having to do loop cut here, loop cut there, loop cut over here, manually place them all over the place and try to align them so they're equal. Instead of you having to do all this, you can just select all the edges or select only the sharp edges by selecting one and then pressing shift G, select similar face angle. You can bevel these edges with control B. You can set the shape value here from 0.5 to 1, which is going to give you a right angle. And you got to have two segments. So this is essentially the same as adding a loop cut on the outside, on the inside, on the right side, on the left side, and all over the place, except they're completely even. So it's much better. And it's a much quicker way to sharpen your edges. Now, this is generally better. But in this case, let me show you why that's not going to work. If we select the edges that we want to sharpen here, which are these edges around the top, and then these edges on the inside, and then we press Control B to bevel this, it gets all fucked up at the bottom, okay? As you can see right now, if we take this edge loop down here, and you can see that because of the bevel, we got these very long edges at the bottom and it's gonna cause us all sorts of problems. It's behaving in ways that we don't want it to behave, right? So this is not gonna work either in this particular situation. Now, another way which the amateurs like to comment on my videos is, Aryan, why don't you just use mean crease and sharpen the edges? Let me tell you why I don't use mean creases in a situation like this. Mean creases, if you don't know, are going to basically exclude that particular edge from the rounding caused by the subdivision surface modifier. So in this example, let me use my flat shading so you can see a little bit better. Because we have a subdivision surface modifier acting here, you can see this edge is round and molten and softened. But if we add a mean crease here, it's going to completely sharpen up this edge. Okay. Now, that can be great in some situations, but it's not going to be great in this situation because as you can see right here, that makes this edge way too sharp. Okay, so it doesn't look realistic at all. So it looks like Minecraft. It looks like Half-Life 2. It doesn't look like you were trying to make a photorealistic render. This is not going to cut it. All right, so using mean creases and sharp edges with Control e Mark Sharp is not going to be good for realism. Right? There are some situations where it might be useful. You might have to do something else, whatever the case may be. But in this example, and in general, 
that's probably not the way you want to go if you're trying to go for realism, if you're doing product visualization and stuff like that. So forget about it. Now, the final and the best method for this particular situation right here, where we got this type of shape, here's what I would do, okay? I would first start by selecting the surface on the inside of this hole, which for me looks sort of like this. Let me also move this thing out of the way for you so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Let's just reveal the full geometry. I'm gonna select the surface on the inside here, nothing in the front. And by the way, we do have a little edge here, which we don't really need, but we're gonna keep it there anyway. We're gonna select this surface on the inside, and then with I, we're going to inset this, which is going to create a little boundary, a little face segment around this selection right here, but only on the inside. It's not gonna affect anything on the outside of this hole. Now, you might want to go to wireframe and check whether or not it works better with or without edge rail, okay, like this. In this case, I think it works a little bit better without edge rail, but in any case, now it's provided us with a supporting loop on the inside of this hole, on the inside of this edge. Now, we still need to have some supporting geometry on the outside to tighten this shit up from the outside a little bit so it doesn't pour outwards too much. And the way to do that is to once again remain with this selection, okay? So we want to keep this area here selected. And then with Control Plus, we're also going to include the new band which we just created with this insetting operation. And now with Control I, we're going to invert the selection. So now everything else is selected except the part that we had selected before. And now once we have that selected, now we're going to deselect these faces over here in the front. Let me just sort of make sure I didn't screw something up over here with these faces. I think I might have because these edges went inwards a little bit. So we maybe have to correct this a little bit. As you can see, they're going downwards. So that might give you a bit of twisting. You always want to, you always want to check out your models very closely when you're doing something like this. Anyway, that doesn't matter too much. Once again, let me select this face, Control Plus, then Control I, and we're gonna deselect these faces over here in the front. And now, when we press I to insert again, we're gonna get a new little face boundary around this hole on the outside, as you can see right here. So now we got supporting geometry on the outside as well. And that gives us the perfect supporting geometry that we need for this kind of edge. Now, one more thing you gotta pay attention to in this type of situation, since we don't have any faces at the bottom here, when you insert this, by default, this boundary thing is gonna be checked, which means you're also gonna get a little face band at, on the inside of the circle, and I don't really wanna have that there. So you can uncheck this during your operation by just pressing B. That's gonna disable the boundary operation, which appears here once you confirm the operation, so you can click on it afterwards. But that's just gonna prevent us from having this little face band down here. And now when you go object shade smooth, it's gonna look nice and beveled. The, the shading is gonna look a lot nicer on this object. And now if you want to, you can take this a step further by selecting this face or these faces at the bottom and deselecting the sides and all this like so. And now once again, you can insert this with the eye to sharpen up these corners or the bottom or whatever you want. But in any case, what I'm trying to show you here is that another way to sharpen up your edges in a situation like this especially is to first inset the inner surface, then invert the selection, possibly deselect a couple of faces, and then inset one more time. And this is gonna give us the perfect kind of supporting geometry that we need in a situation like this, all right? So there's that, that's how I uh, took care of this car right here, this Ferrari model that I made. That's how I'm gonna take care of all the other little dents here on this AC. If you wanna learn more about Blender and all, all types of techniques like this in Blender for 3D modeling, if you wanna get good at this shit, you can check out my Blender School, there's a link for that below. If you wanna ask me a question, you can be in touch with me on Instagram, I'm also gonna put a link for that below. Let me know what you wanna see next and I'll see you in the next one.